All right, everybody, welcome back once again to Inside the Matrix. We're so happy to see you whenever that may be. And today, back by popular demand, and I mean big demand, we have Ola Wolney with us. And uh, for those of you who've been watching the show for a while, you're going to realize that <laughs> she is awesome. And we're happy to have her here. Welcome, Ola. Thank you so much, Jamie. I am so thrilled and so humbled by the uh, by the next invitation, by by the fact that people are interested in um, what I would like to share. I think it's very important to to talk about those things. Um, I am really really happy that I have the opportunity. Thank you so much for having me back. Well, I, a bunch of people have been bugging me, and they're saying, "When is Ola coming back? We want her to come back." And and uh, of course, we've, you know, you and I have been juggling schedules and trying to get things lined up. And finally today it came together and, and we're so happy. Um, one thing that uh, I got a few comments on before people were asking me, you know, Ola has shared so much information with us. And there's one area that we'd like to hear a little bit more about. And that's, you know, how do we escape the matrix? How do we get out of this thing? Or can we get out of this thing? You know, all that kind of yeah. stuff. And I know you have so many thoughts on this and, and so much to share with us. And, uh, and, and also know it goes in a lot of different directions. So uh, if you wouldn't mind, just uh, kind of take, it, take us down that road a little bit. Absolutely. The, the holy grail, huh? How to escape the matrix. Um, <laughs> and so, um, yeah, that's a big question. Um, I, I think I might surprise you a little bit with where we're going to end up. Um, by the end of this, by the end of this um, uh, chat, because um, you see, a lot of people concentrate on escaping the matrix, as in matrix is the inevitable. It is, and it's there, and the only way out, the only thing to do with it is to escape it. But we happen to find ourselves at a very um, amazing, unprecedented times. Times uh, about which the uh, people, the ancient people, the, the the people throughout the the centuries, they all talked about the times now. Um, obviously, not not in terms of dates, but in terms of events and and signs. This is where the astrology comes handy and astronomy, because we're we're talking um, about certain configurations in the sky. So we know that the time is now, okay? We know it started, the Vatican, the Vatican confirmed it. So I would like to just talk a little bit. Uh, I think it would it would be good to um, give that introduction uh, in terms of the prophecies. What are the prophecies talking about the times now? And we have several of them. We have a variety of information coming from all around the world. Um, I think a lot of the material is a little bit misunderstood. Um, so, so perhaps due to due to that, um, we are struggling a little bit to perhaps piece things up and to, to connect the dots. But it's almost like when you look from a certain angle, at which I was trying to hint um, and and talk from that angle on previous occasions, really everything um, becomes absolutely clear. And of course, the angle is the feminine alchemy angle it is bringing women to the equation in a in a sense that um it is the return of the alchemical woman so so women have been obviously pushed throughout the centuries throughout thousands of years to that um background role to um uh, serve sacrifice and 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 sort of their powers the 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 original design um, the original abilities that a woman has been created for have been absolutely um, disconnected from us. We have been disconnected from that wisdom. That wisdom has been sort of on a drip um, uh, passed on throughout centuries. So, so we're talking the the witches of the past. We're talking the um, secret societies. They all had access to to the to the wisdom that we have um, officially and uh, uh, in a, on a sort of ground scale we have we have lost that, mm, but that wisdom is coming back, and you know that because a lot of ladies um, for for the past decades they have been feeling that something is coming up. They have been they have been definitely feeling drawn to um, 
to explore certain things that they, they felt probably big changes in themselves. They started getting ready for something, perhaps without even understanding what are they getting ready for. And you see the the return of alchemical women, um, alchemical women, is nothing to do with the any kind of feminism, any kind of nonsense like that. Of course, we know that all that is steered and and that is part of the agenda to divert attention for yes. those men that are starting to slowly but surely uh, reconnect with themselves. The alchemy is something totally different. Um, I this is my this is my beloved area. This is my beloved topic. Probably some people might know me for astrology, but that is actually um, more like a tool to to explain certain things. While it is the women and the women are the, the alchemical women. Okay, just to be clear. So what is an alchemical woman? It is a woman who reconnected to herself enough and i and i go into that in some of my other interviews and in my teachings it is it is not that easy to explain everything in one go but it is to do with the ability to activate um secretions production of secretions in the body because that's if you think about it right for a woman to give birth there are certain processes that need to need to happen so we have that part of fertility we still keep because it serves the matrix but on much higher levels if a woman is able to bring in the soul from another dimension like i always say into this world materialize it then what else are we able to bring into this world to birth into this world if we are able to feed the baby, then what else are we able, how else are we able to feed this world? With what and how? And you see, this is back to, for example, the uh, Egyptian artwork. You will often see Isis breastfeeding Osiris, not Horus, Osiris. And this is nothing to do with any, any we have weird inappropriate stuff. It is actually it's symbolic of the fact that women not only give birth, but they also feed. Not men, it's symbolic, but this is this is the introduction to the to the alchemy. So so what kind of energies, what are we really able to do when we are able to reconnect to those to those powers? And ultimately it is the power of the womb, the holy grail. Okay, there is no holy grail buried anywhere, nobody's gonna find that. Holy <laughs> grail according to the Cathars, according to the secret societies. According to the ancient texts, legends, myths, this is why you had all those um, beautiful stories and fairy tales where witches are always cooking, right? In a, in a cauldron, cooking a soup. Everything is symbolic, okay? Age of Aquarius, Aquarius holding a pitcher, pouring water, not a pitcher. Everything back to the same, um, it, it points out to the same uh, a process we're talking we're talking the womb the awakened womb the womb of a of an alchemical woman <clears throat> and alchemy is written in the secretions uh, so secretions of our body uh, the ability to for, for those I don't even want to call them chemical substances because it reduces the true meaning to just the physical um, element when it's not it operates on very much energetic level. And I'm sure that ladies are thinking, how do we activate it? You know, it is it is as simple as and as difficult as it depends how you lead your life, how you live your life, how you approach yourself, how to see yourself, how you respect yourself, how you love yourself. Women have to step back from the role of mothering, controlling, um, uh, trying to do everything for everyone, sacrificing, putting everyone else first. So it is the return to that kind of um, woman who truly is aware of the uh, the powers, the powers, the alchemical powers that she holds. But she first needs to stop running around and serving everybody else, trying to save everybody, trying, trying to... Um, prove herself, give too much, etc. Because those behaviors, you know, this is this is result of a heavy programming over millennia. But those behaviors disconnect us from that um, essence. So back to prophecies, why did I even mention them? Mm. Because you see, those prophecies, a little bit misunderstood, they always 
always touch on the the woman, the role of a woman. So we have, for example, the the Inca, uh, the the condor and the eagle uh, prophecy. If anybody anybody heard, um, it is the, the prophecy says that when the eagle of the north um, unites with the condor from the south, a new day for Earth will awaken, will begin. What does it mean? Well, the, the condor of the south, okay, it actually represents the feminine. It represents the women. It is talking about this patriarchy that we have been um, witnessing. And uh, uh, unfortunately, we, we, we've been kind of pushed in that notion um, for thousands and thousands of years. So the truly what it means is that the the condor represents the women the feminine so the women need to come back they need to but not in sense of some kind of competition with men absolutely women never compete they don't compete with we don't compete with one another we don't compete with men because that pushes us into that masculine behavior so you see the agenda is very smart it is always pushing the women either into the victim role or into the masculine role None of those polarities, none of those um, extremes is going to enable that access to that to that true um, power. So the um, the condor represents the women. This is the return of the women, the women remembering the original um, uh, abilities, the original beautiful wisdom of the of the feminine line and stepping and being able to again um, perform, what we used to, what we used to do thousands and thousands of years ago, before what? Before the age of Pisces, the age of fishermen, before the net has been, we've been caught as humanity, caught in the net. This is why age of Pisces, right? We have the prophecy of um, rainbow warriors. Another one misunderstood, right? Everybody's waiting for the rainbow warriors, but actually, the rainbow warriors, the rainbow itself comes from um it's a deep deep mystery one of the deepest feminine mysteries um a mystery uh if you if you uh, perhaps look back into the sumerian texts uh inanna is talking about uh, in one of the texts is talking about uh, the times when women become the thunder again and you know the thunder is linked to the to the storm and the storm to the rain and that's usually right after after the rain after the thunder comes the rainbow so that is not to do with the weather actually but alchemically the original communion okay the original holy communion that been uh it's been hijacked by uh, christianity it's been hijacked by by church to be performed by men the original communion union of heaven and earth and the elements across it was a union performed by women alchemically in their womb so the return of rainbow warriors it is the return again of the alchemical women who are able to perform the alchemy in their womb the communion union right reuniting Again, very much to talk about this topic. I don't. I don't really want to go off on a tangent on every single of those stories. Just want to give you a bit of a flavor. Yeah, that that, that makes so much sense because women are the portals. You know, they, they prove that by bringing life into the world. So the women, it makes perfect sense that women would be the ones to bring us in union with who we actually are. And and because there's a only a small portion of us in this world, it, it seems to me. Absolutely. Um, so, so you see, the this is this is not to say that um, women are in any way better. It is it is unfortunately to say that we have been reduced to perform certain very very limited uh, functions, and and we've been stripped of our probably biggest and most important um, capabilities in 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 the context of the planet, in the context of life. Um, uh, return of the white buffalo woman right another one uh, <laughs> another misunderstood one the white buffalo calf woman again linked very much to the original um 
um, original teachings. So, so, so this is the representative, most likely from the Pleiades, because of course the 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 calf, the the buffalo, right? So we have the Taurus link, the link with the Taurus Pleiades in Taurus. So one of the one of the uh, goddesses, one of the one of the females um, from another race, teaching uh, teaching humans, teaching um, the women of of our race. Um, certain mysteries reminding them and the return of the white buffalo woman is really um a return again why why white well the the the, the legend itself the prophecy the, the prophecy if you if you look into that lakota story as she was leaving she wasn't only seen in white she was also seen in red and in black and those three colors red white and uh, black they are symbolic or they are associated with three aspects of feminine energy, which is the uh, maiden, the mother, the creatrix, and witch, the black color at the end. So you see, again, it is literally to do with women remembering those mysteries, stepping back into those energies. These are three aspects of, of a woman um, linked to, first of all, the, the maiden energy, nothing to do with that physical virginity mother mary nothing to do with that it is actually to do with the virgin birth is parthenogenesis so women hold in our genes um the key uh and the wisdom of uh birth without uh participation of a male counterpart um it is also to do with our dna and the ability to for dna to um uh, uh, sort of give us uh, the healing uh, potential, full healing potential, immortality. We don't know that, right? Our DNA has been tampered with so much. It's been dammed down to a point where we've lost the, the immortality. We've lost uh, ability to heal um, very often. So, so the, 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 the range uh, of life has been dramatically decreased. And of course, our experience in this life we get we get sick this is not this is not what the life intended this is not how we were how we were originally designed we have the mother energy or the creatrix energy to do literally with the birth and we have the uh, energy of the witch and that is the the most transformational um energy the most transformational power so you see another inversions because in in this era we have um uh we tend to sort of glorify the world glorifies the younger women, right? The Instagrams, the uh, and all those, all those um, uh, cultural sort of um, uh, notions, which are so much focused on the on on, on the body, how you look, etc., uh, etc. Et when it's actually the women who are even postmenopausal, so so the women who are much more advanced in age are the most powerful and they have always been this is why you have the witches from the past right they were not the young girls the witches were the older women they are the most powerful these are the most magnificent um energies that you can meet if they are fully aware of their potential unstoppable we don't have to leave the matrix enough with the witches and they will take this matrix down and i will tell you how in a minute um so why do we know that the time is now well even vatican confirmed it in 2017 okay even if you look at the apocalypse um there is a passage um uh, which says that um, a woman uh will appear in the sky in in heaven uh clothed with the sun and with the um a crown of 12 stars above her head the moon at her feet and she will be with a child. She will give birth to a child. We had that um, astronomical event in 2017 at the fall equinox. So September 2017, exactly that event, we had the uh, constellation Virgo, the virgin, the woman, okay, sun by her head. So the sun just ends at Virgo we have the 12 stars above her head meaning the stars of the constellation leo which precedes her plus three planets that um, comes to to 12 
we have the moon at her feet. So the moon was leaving Virgo, moving to Libra. And um, we have Jupiter there as well. So the pregnancy, okay? That was to set the tone, to give the timeline. And the timeline was 2017. Even Vatican confirmed it. They have their own observatory. Um, and you can find it on Vatican's website confirming that, yes, this seems to be the sign from the apocalypse. Mm, so so what does that tell us? It It is back to, I'm sure that ladies feel it and, 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 and gents definitely too, that this is all the time the same theme plays out. Whether you look at the prophecies, whether you look at the um, apocalypse, there is always a woman, always a return of a woman. Why is it? What, what does the sign says? Right. So she she has the sun. The sun was never masculine, by the way. No culture in the world. If you go back to the original teachings, the original um, uh, uh, the, the the true history. Okay, the, the the original mythology. No culture in the world deemed sun masculine. That is an overlay. That is a matrix overlay. So the moon. Every culture knew that the moon, um, no good news, okay? But that obviously, there's been a heavy heavy marketing from the matrix to to, to kind of um, change the story uh, regarding the moon. But the moon overall is control. Moon is the tool of the matrix. So the, the moon for thousands of years, right? We had it in a way above our head. So what does that mean? It means... It was controlling. It was controlling us, and I'm not just talking about um, the the full moon and this, the the phases of the moon. I am literally talking about a fully blown um, uh, operation that's been that's been put in place by the ancient gods, the Adonaki, however you want to call them. Um, they 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 stood behind um, putting uh, the moon there in place there's absolutely zero geophysical evidence that would support the fact that the moon is real or it's a natural satellite it just does not support it there's no evidence of that so if i kind of switch hats to my engineering hat you know i've i've been down that path um it does not it does not meet any cr criteria um if you compare that to other planets it just doesn't doesn't meet that even the sh even the size of it just happens to be uh, such a coincidence, right? Uh, in sense of the, the 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 size of the sun, so we know well, that. Yeah, we see that the moon is basically equivalent in size to the sun. It's also, you know, strange anomalies. Uh, you know, they they say that uh, the Earth is spinning. Of course, we I don't believe that for one minute, but uh, they say that the planets rotate and spin. Uh, but the moon just keeps the same face exactly exactly. towards us all the yes. time. You know, exactly. that, that is totally an artificial structure. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, people just are always debating on what ec actually is the moon. What is it? Is it some kind of a physical structure? Is it just a light source? Is it a technology? Uh, <clears throat> a lot of people uh, think it's a just a plasma source of plasma light. There was a Russian scientist in the 60s who was laughing at uh, the U.S. when they claimed to have landed on the moon uh, in the early, uh, late 60s, early 70s, and said that the moon is not something you can land on. It's not a rock, you know, flying out there. Yeah. And it, if gravity was what they say it is, the moon would have crashed into the earth a long time ago. So, you right. know, <laughs> what keeps it where yeah. it's at? So, I mean, to me, it seems like definitely like technology. Absolutely. And and you see, I think I think that we also have to be a little bit careful because perhaps some of those questions we will never land a definite answer on. Is it plasma? Is it physical? Is it is it a, um, a hologram? We, we don't know. OK, we may not know ever. I don't really know if there is so much um, value in getting down as, as long as we know that something's off, something's fishy, right? As long as we know that and we appreciate that this is not natural, um, I don't know if there is necessarily so much um, value in pursuing it to that last kind of bit of um, answer. Um, yeah. In this context that I'm mentioning it, it is, it is more about the shift 
it is more about the fact that more and more people, specifically women, because we know the moon controls women. It controls specifically women because it is controlling our fertility. There is nothing romantic and great to be adjusting your cycle to the moon. Okay, this is actually side of control. So the moon at the feet of the virgin is so symbolic because it means it moves from that position of power and influence to the position where we take over. We regain that um, power over our bodies, but not just our bodies because the moon is mind control. It is part of the mind control machine. So whether it's plasma, whether it's a hologram or something that you can land on, which I, you know, I mean, come on, you, you saw the, the way this thing looked, right? I can build a better one behind my house. So <laughs> they, 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 they wouldn't land anywhere with that thing. But, oh, heck no. Yeah. Right? What so, a joke. What a joke. So um, I would um, uh, I will just focus on the fact that what we know for sure is that it is part of the control mechanism. And, and, and in terms of the of the of the prophecy or, or the apocalypse, the point being is that the moon actually stops having that influence. It stops. The problem is that it is so it's sort of ingrained in our subconscious that it's us that continue to believe certain things to be in a certain way that it's somehow well it we, we get that um uh, impression that it is still controlling us but that sign appearing in the sky is actually giving us a very important message which is the moon as part of the matrix is losing its grip it is losing that control why well this is where the other part of the equation comes in which is why are all the instruments um uh, tracking the um uh, cosmic energy the influences um why why are they or all of the scale what kind of energy is coming to earth well some call it the dark energy right they cannot measure it because it's off the charts but what the scientists, um, some, some of the, of course, you know, you're not going to get it in the mainstream media because they get, they get shut down, but, but here and there, somebody will, 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 will reveal some of the Russian, um, scientists, uh, confirmed that they also track some kind of energy coming from the earth. And it is also off the charts. They don't have instruments to measure that. So they attribute that to some kind of dark energy not dark as in something um evil is coming no 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 the dark energy the dark matter that even nasa talks about so something is definitely coming our way both ways okay remember the communion of heaven and earth okay energy is coming both ways mm -hmm. that energy in itself has the or it is already starting to mess up the net the you know, age of Pisces, right? End of age of Pisces, starting to mess up the net. This is why you get the glitches in the in the matrix. This is why the moon is losing its influence. But you see, those things, we cannot just sit back and wait for those things to finish it off. This is why every prophecy, even the apocalypse, is pointing to women, to the role that women need to play out at this time. It's critical, okay? This is not any kind of fe feminist manifesto that I'm trying to to call to. Um, I am literally trying to 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 explain the context, um, how important it is for 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 women to fully understand their criticality, um, in this in this context. And this is where we get to the point. So, how do we get out of the matrix? Well, you know, we could talk about getting out of the matrix, but in this context that that we are witnessing and it's absolutely brilliant and unprecedented it is not even getting out of the matrix the fact that these energies are supporting us right now and if women can step in with their triplicity this is the triplicity with their tr three energies okay and be able to alchemically use it we can take the matrix down 
not in any um, uh, sort of way where we start uh, fighting or, you know, there is a war here. We, we're not going to have Star Wars here. Right. It is an alchemical process. It is literally an alchemical process where women are able to start birthing because you see, as long as things are in energy, so, okay, this energy is coming to earth, some energy is coming from the earth and what? It's just energy. It's just energy until it's materialized. The materialization part belongs to women. It is the, this is why we need the Holy Grail. This is why we need the womb because that's how we give birth. So this is how women are able to materialize, to bring this into existence. Meaning what? This is not an esoteric, you know, I'm not flying off with some new agey stuff. I'm talking about the, the, the kind of things that uh, whether the, the tribes or the ethnic uh, 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 people from, from, from all sorts of cultures, including even where I live, you see here in the, in, in the um, north of Norway, we have the Sami people and it's beautiful when they share their stories and they say that the time now is the return of the old. It is not new, no new world order the old world is coming back. What does that mean? It's almost like we're going back to the original settings. So the energies that women are to materialize, that are to bring in, is back to love. This world is absent love. This world is kept in those low vibrational um, energies, right? This is why there's so much fear. There, there is death. Uh, uh, killings, uh, a war, supposedly, right? Uh, 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 all sorts of fear-based uh, propaganda, whether that be the, 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 the last three years, right? With the pandemic, etc. Anything, anything. There's always bad news. Everything is designed to lower the vibration, to keep us in a certain state. Women are expected or women are here right now to not to fight it because women don't fight okay there is no need to to fight anything but it is literally the fact that women are able to materialize certain energies into existence into this world which are then counteracting what's already here and think about it we know that this construct we know that the dawn the the feminine everything is technology it is a very advanced technology whether what's on the moon what's um uh, under the dome everything is technology to control so here if we bring the uh the storm remember when i mentioned about the storm and the rainbow warriors okay what happens when you have a storm and um you get a thunder and you get a short circuit right into into some kind of electric system everything gets taken down so literally it is it is a big simplification what i'm explaining but i want you to get a feel for why the alchemy is crucial and why all of these cultures are talking about women so it is the alchemy it is the alchemy of a woman which has been always always our natural capacity natural capability this is why you see when you when you think about um any um mythological story or any any uh, uh legends the bible mary magdalene and jesus isis and osiris inanna and dumuzi hera and zeus why is there always a woman there is always a woman around those men because there are things that they are not able to do. So there's always a woman. There's always a woman at resurrection. Resurrection, why, why am I talking about it? Because original resurrection has nothing to do with physical death. Original resurrection has to do with the spiritual death, disconnection from the soul. Meaning when they catch our souls when they catch us into the net this is why the pope for example why does he wear the headpiece like like a sort of the mouth fish head. the fish head because he's a fisherman the pope is a fisherman yeah that makes so much sense and that uh just the fact that they have targeted women 
uh, with the moon and with all these other technologies. And they it basically they've they've made the the uh, the iconic women nowadays to to char- characterize all the negative masculine aspects <laughs> that are out there. You know, so the ones that are pushed forward in in government and industry and CEOs and all this, all yeah. these women basically are are you know showing their negative masculine attributes and these exactly. are the women these are exactly. the women that are pushed forward so that that you know it's so obvious what's been going on and of course you know the dark side has been using this alchemy that you're talking about for a long time you know they're aware of all these energies and they're using it to their benefit but the Absolutely. exciting thing to me now is that you know you're talking about the reemergence of femininity, of womanhood, uh, coming forward and claiming their power again. That's exciting to me. And, and I think it's totally happening because our world is being shown to us as it is. Uh, you know, for so long we were deluded into thinking, well, you know, everything's kind of okay. You know, we, there's a little bit of problems here and there, but now we're seeing it's just so incredibly corrupt and ridiculous Absolutely. and it's all being revealed to us. This is the great thing. This is what gives us an opportunity now to not only become conscious and aware of it, but to make changes and do something about it. And I'm excited to hear that the, the enlightened conscious women will have such a huge role in it. Absolutely. And you see, when you when you say enlightened conscious women, I I must say that the, the, the consciousness, the true consciousness of a woman is Sophia. It is the consciousness. We don't even have the right wor- word to translate it. But the, the Sophia is the consciousness of the womb. So, you know, when we think consciousness is the head, but whenever you speak about yourself and you say, I this, I that, you don't touch your head, you touch here, it's the heart. And in some tribes, right, if you actually go back to some of the uh, indig- indigenous cultures, they touch the womb. Mm-hmm. So so this is where the true identity of that consciousness that's awakening is, resides. And we know that, we kind of feel it. But like you absolutely, you're spot on, um, Jamie, with, uh, with the fact that the agenda, the way it's unfolding, it is, you have to kind of stop and, 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 and notice how, how crazy this has been thought out because it is it is literally um uh, targeting exactly what i'm talking about if you think about the the whole rainbow agenda the the, the whole 50 genders etc um why is it there it is there because they are afraid of women so they want now people to be confused are you this are you that you know explore your options go into this ugly um dirty sexuality uh because any you, you see all that is killing the sacredness of what i'm talking about oh yeah and then they're trying to you know uh replace women with trans men and you know this exactly. is an incredible insult to women and and i i'm just mind boggled by any woman who would support this, this kind of a movement where we have to recognize and make all these extra accommodations for trans people and you know people who are basically you know mentally ill as far as i'm concerned yeah absolutely absolutely (laughs) and it's you see it's i i don't even i I, obviously i'm aware of it you cannot you cannot miss it unfortunately it's too much craziness everywhere but you you see don't don't in in a sense my message to women is don't think about it don't worry about it because as long as women do our part and we don't even have to have every single woman in the world involved and and awakened in a way to this that is again the mind-based approach that how many what's the number where is the threshold forget it don't worry about it um it is you know women are we don't have to be uh, so logical about it because that's the whole point we have to drop from the head down and down here, there are no numbers. There is no logic here. Down here is the alchemy. So so we don't have to worry about enough, not enough. We don't have to really worry about those agendas, but we have to do what we have come here to do. We have to do what we are designed to do. And that is something that I would absolutely wish upon every woman, if you feel in any way cold or um, connected to, 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 to this message, 
please follow that because this is the time and, and we, we need every single one of us um, not to support the madness, but to actually free the rest and, and, and lead the way. Just as every prophecy and even the Vatican clearly points out that, yes, there is something here about it, right? There's something and, to And I, I feel like it, it's really important, uh, you know, women are, are stepping forward. They're, they're taking their rightful place in the world. And I believe that together, the masculine and then the feminine uh, have the capability fully to, uh, you know, each playing their own role, uh, bring this world back to what it should be or, or what it used to be, like you're saying, exactly. bring the old world back exactly. because we've been diverted off of our path. You know, the the paradise that once existed in this realm it was long gone, and I think we're headed back towards that. Absolutely. Very exciting. Absolutely. Now, uh, are there any other prophecies that you uh, wanted to, to touch on as well? Because I find this fascinating. Um, I, I can, all of them pretty much are really, the, the message is very, very consistent. Um, we have the Cathars, we have the Bogomils, um, also pointing at the time now, we have the Cathars with the, um, uh, the prophecy of the, uh, when, when the laurel, um, turns green again, and that is, um, 2021. So here we are in the midst of it, right? We have the obviously the age of Aquarius and the true meaning of Aquarius. Um, if you were to look up the mainstream, um, uh, even even the the, the graphic of um, Aquarius uh, in, in terms of the, the the zodiac sign, it is always a man, of course, because everything needs to be inverted. But originally, and we know that the original woman holding the pitcher, pouring the water of life, was Hebe mythologically so so the the woman the, the aquarius is actually a lady with a pitcher and that is again it's a symbolic um message to uh refer to the pouring of the water of life from what not from the pitcher from the womb so this is that ca capability of um performing the alchemy and pouring okay birthing certain energies water of life original calls of creation the return of the original back to those um uh, original original design of this world so back to the time before we have been raided or the earth was raided before the time where slavery um and the genetic experimentation started where still we had all those other strands of dna activated and operating return back to back to that and you see this is this is so so beautiful because we have evidence that support uh the fact that the time is now however we cannot we cannot just sit back and and wait and and watch it unfold and i know that the women that are deeply called to and and connected to um and so those teachings they are not idle um you know Every woman is that there is no there is no special teaching that uh, such women needs to um, go through. You just literally have to listen to yourself. It is as as simple as that and as difficult as that at the same time because we have those layers and layers of programming. Um, and when I talk about the net, the Pisces, the net is the matrix. So, and the matrix, literally the, um, uh, you know, what you see watching movies um, of, of that kind of net um, uh, uh, that, that we've been caught into, it is the programming. It is the conditioning. These are the trauma. These are the things that we buy into that are absolutely not true. So when we start undressing right inanna's descent to the underworld when she takes off symbolic she takes off um her clothes seven gates we have been um according to feminine alchemy caught into seven layers of that deep deep programming and when you get down to the bottom what you see there is something that you might have believed your whole life that it's it's good it's right but it's actually totally wrong and it's very, very limiting. So the layers we have to strip off, especially as those women, those women performing alchemy have to absolutely strip off the, um, the programming. 
but every woman, you know, if you are already feeling this, uh, then you're ready. Then there is really nothing to don't don't get the mind to involve. Don't worry. Don't think about what is the right thing to do. What's the wrong thing to do? How can you? Um, where should you start? Just follow whatever your um, intuition and your feeling um, tells you, and do not do not get pulled into the the sort of victim um, uh, uh, space where women are sacrificing themselves they are proving the, themselves they are doing things against themselves they are doing they're not being true to themselves that cannot continue but also do not get pushed to the other um, side of the spectrum where we become masculine we start chasing um, things we start competing we start um, displaying you know total disconnect from that intuition from that subtle um, a beautiful uh, side of uh, the, the femininity that you that you've man mentioned, and and that has nothing to do, by the way, with any of that you know, Instagrammy, TikToky femininity. <laughs> they were totally different um, essence, and you know, this is that sweet point that that we need to we need to find um, and just just reconnect to reconnect to self. Um, a lot of the um, uh, myths, ancient stories, legends um, can help with that. Um, the men, what's the role of the men in all this? Well, the, the men's role is crucial and we absolutely need the, the, the men who can reconnect to their heart as well because the, the men's role has always been to protect the women, to give them space for what? So that they can step into that alchemy, so that they can reconnect with that true feminine essence. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. And what you said about peeling back the layers is like, or the layers of an onion uh, or something similar to that is so true because we've been layered upon layered upon layered upon programming in our subconscious, which is just full of nonsense. You know, Absolutely. all of us have been programmed. Humans, you know, that's, if we have a flaw, that's one of them. Uh, that we are so easily programmed uh, by these dark entities who who really just want to own and control us in every way, and they have done for for eons. But all that's changing now, and that it's uh, it's time for us to take back our power. And I know a lot of people want to go more in depth with you, Ola, on what you know and what you can show them. And I know it's not something we can do in a in a short show like this, but um, tell them about your webinar that you have. And uh, we will put the link to it in the description for people who want to go more in depth on all this because I, I know it's there's a lot to it, right? Absolutely. So I um, I finally uh, <laughs> I finally did what I promised myself to do a long time ago, um, and uh, I uh, recorded a webinar. It's a four hour webinar where wow. this one is called Mysterium of Life. It was literally released just before Easter. So the Easter theme plays in the mysterium um, because it is it is going way beyond the true meaning of Easter, which is absolutely, again, misconstrued and, and misinterpreted. And of I mean, there's not, nothing to do with bunnies, eggs and chocolate and things like that. <laughs> and it's, it's, yes, chocolate and bunnies, not so much, but, but, but the egg of life, absolutely there. Yeah. I go um, into the, the details because um, uh, you see, this is absolutely related. Uh, the mysterium of life, the whole Easter theme of resurrection, the resurrection, as Mary Magdalena says, if you do not resurrect by life after death, forget it, okay? It's not going to happen. So what is the true resurrection? It has nothing to do with physical death. And I explain in that webinar exactly what is the context of that. What is the context of that resurrection from what? It is the, it is that part which frees us from the matrix. So I explain specifically what the the Mary Magdalena teachings were uh, the Isis Inanna so all these ladies present all these not ladies the beautiful energies the goddesses present at the uh, resurrection of the male counterpart why is there always a woman present which ladies it should tell you again that your role is crucial it's critical so the woman is actually leading those processes 
So, so this is what I go into, um, whether you want to call it exiting the matrix or escaping the matrix or, or, you know, ripping the shackles. These are the alchemical processes that I explained there. I also go deeper into the, um, of the prophecies and I explain that context. I, I actually explain that, you know, if we can get it right, ladies, now, literally this lifetime, then we don't have to look for an escape of the matrix. We have the chance to take this matrix down. The glitches have already started. We already see the, um, uh, the proof that something is happening. Something is already uh, falling apart. Um, we just need to keep going with the process. Absolutely. I love that. <laughs> it's very exciting. <laughs> So, Olo, thank you so much once again for sharing with thank us. You. We we so appreciate you. We so admire uh, the all the knowledge and wisdom that you've accumulated that you're sharing with us. So, until next time, everybody, we'll see you inside the matrix. Please take care. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody.